Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jake Goodio. In this video, we are going to look at atmospheric pressure and its application in daily life. Well, I won't talk too much about atmospheric pressure because it is actually similar or it is actually air pressure. It's the same thing. I've already talked about air pressure in my previous video. Feel free to check that out. Okay, so what is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is pressure exerted by the atmosphere on the surface of the earth on all the objects on the earth. So that means all of us right now at this moment when you're watching this video, you are experiencing atmospheric pressure, whether you realize it or not. Well, there is one example here of this little girl trying to drink maybe chocolate milk. And if you look at this packet, it is squeezed. Did she squeeze it? Actually, she doesn't need to squeeze it. She just have to keep drinking. What happened? When the drink is sucked out inside the packet, it will become a partial vacuum. Why? Because the milk become less and the space for the, for the air inside the packet becomes bigger. Remember the space? volume when volume goes up what goes down the pressure go down so the air pressure inside will decrease and the air pressure outside the atmospheric pressure outside is actually bigger now compared to the one inside so it will press onto the packet and the air pressure outside is actually atmospheric pressure well, before we look at application of this concept in our daily life, there's one very important thing that Tekutio needs you to remember. That air or any particles will move from high pressure to the area with low pressure. We will always move from the area of high pressure to low pressure. Of course, all of us do not like stress, right? We'll like to go to a space where it is more relaxing. So the nature tells us that as well. Let's look at our first example. This is a plunger, all right? So what happens when your sink is blocked? What do you use? You use this plunger. So how do you use it? You push it down and then you pull it, all right? I will display some explanation here which you can read while I try to explain. So look at this diagram here. When you push it up, when you push it down, what happens is the air inside here is forced out. As you pull, the space in here, the space inside here becomes bigger with less air because the air has already been forced out. So what does that create? That creates an area of low pressure. When the pressure inside the plunger here is low, what happens is the external air pressure, the atmospheric pressure becomes bigger compared to here, compared to the space that you have created. And so the blockage will flow from the area of high pressure to the area of low pressure. That's how it works. How about Matchburg hemisphere? What they do is they get um, two hemispheres. What does hemisphere mean? Hemisphere means half of a sphere that means if you cut a ball into half that is called hemisphere all right you get two hemisphere which you call the matchbird hemisphere and put them together and you pump out all the air inside you create a vacuum in this area that is level as one so what happens is inside here there is zero air there's nothing in there okay so it is vacuum vacuum means there's absolutely nothing so what happened is not only is space one here, the space here has nothing, it has zero pressure. It is not just low pressure, it has no pressure whatsoever. So what happened is the atmospheric pressure outside becomes significantly stronger than the one inside because inside there's no pressure at all. So the atmospheric pressure will push these two hemispheres together so strong and it exert a really strong force on this hem hemisphere so you cannot really separate this they will be glued together okay by the pressure you do not need to apply any glue 
What I mean is, it's, it's impossible for you to separate these two hemispheres if you vacuum the area inside. All right. Number three, how does straw work? Okay. What happens is when you try to drink, as you suck on the straw, the air comes out. When the air comes out, that means you create space here that is empty and the pressure becomes low. That means the atmospheric pressure outside is bigger and hence it will push the drink up and you are able to drink the drink that is in the glass. Example number four, the siphon. Okay, how does this work? We get a tube, fill it with water, and what happens is you put the point B here, the end of tube B here, put it lower than A, and what happens is the water will flow out. Okay? As the water flow out from B, it creates a low pressure inside this tube. When it is low pressure, atmospheric pressure at area 3 here will become uh, larger compared to the tube and hence it will push the water out and the water will flow out continuously. Example number 5, syringe. How does syringe work? Well, that is a piston that the nurse will pull up when the nurse is getting ready to give you an injection. Okay, so when you pull the piston out, what happens is you create a space here. The room here, the space here becomes bigger. So when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. So you create a low pressure inside and in the, in the uh, high pressure outside and hence, as I say earlier, very important for you to remember, the liquid will flow from high pressure to low pressure, hence it will flow in. Very easy, right? All you need to do is identify which is the low pressure area and which is the high pressure area and the liquid or the air or any particles will always move from high pressure to low pressure. Vacuum cleaner, same principle, all right? So what happens is in every vacuum cleaner, there's always a fan. And this fan will suck out all the air inside and bring it out and create a space here. When you create a space, it becomes low pressure. And out here, number two, can you see number two? Out here, this space becomes greater pressure or higher pressure compared to the space here in number one so the dust and the air will be pushed inside and that's how the vacuum cleaner work example number seven is very important especially if you are in form three okay pt3 this is a popular question even form two i'm sure a lot of teachers like to get this question so pay close attention when you open a can of condensed milk and you poke only one hole, what happens? Actually, the milk will not flow out easily. Alright, it does not flow out easily. Why? When you only have one hole here, as the milk flow out, you create a bigger space here for the air. And when it is a bigger space, it means the pressure is lower. When the pressure is lower, that means atmospheric pressure outside is higher and the atmospheric pressure will push the milk back in. Meaning there will be a force here pushing it in and the milk cannot flow out. You need to open up at least two holes. Why? When you have two holes, as the milk flow out, even if the pressure here become lower, the air outside will be pushed in and balance it out. And hence, the air pressure inside and outside now is equal and the milk will have no problem to flow out. Okay? So that's all from Jekutio in this video. I shall see you soon in the next video. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.